Heidi ho people of the interwebs, it's Pete with Backdraft Bikes, and I am here with you for the long, long, long term ride review. I don't know why the awkward pause there, sorry about that, but anyways, let's get down to business. I'd like to talk to you about my Triumph 1200 Scrambler XE. I've had it now for about three years almost, and uh, very, very much enjoy this bike. I've not gotten tired of it yet, and actually I think three years might be a record for me holding on to a two-wheeled beast. Uh, I currently have about 3,000 miles or so on it, and uh, I am excited to talk to you about my viewpoints on having this bike for so long. What's going on, Bob? Two gold wings. Anywho, um, I've had this bike for a while and I've grown to really enjoy some things about it. So I, I wanna tell you those things and I'm gonna kinda also give you some cons, some of the things I'm not super happy about with the bike. But uh, all in all, at the very end, I'll give you my, uh, my final rating of the bike so you kinda understand where I'm coming from. Uh, first off, let's talk about the first thing I really like about this bike and that is the engineering. Uh, Triumph really thought this bike through. Uh, it's almost like they put, you know, Ron Burgundy and uh, Steve McQueen in the room and said, okay guys, what would you like for a bike? Steve McQueen said he wanted a bike that he could do pretty much anything on. And uh, Ron Burgundy said he wanted to look good while he was doing it. So the two of them had a baby and this is what came out. Uh, this bike, again, really well thought out and it looks good doing it for the most part uh, a couple things i like about the the triumph engineering let me just go through front to back here i love the wheels this bike comes with reverse spoke tubeless wheels and uh it, they're just it's pretty cool to, to not have to deal with a tube and also have the strength and uh forgivability of something with spokes that you can true out so that was nice i appreciate uh triumphs I give them a general nod in that direction uh, for doing that second off uh, I like triumphs thoughtfulness when it comes to the electronics that they put in here uh, it's got a very simple display you can change the way it looks uh, very easily there's a little joystick that you control with your thumb that will you know allow you to change settings and stuff which is kind of cool um, it, it was it was well laid out I kind of wish there would have been a little bit more uh, display options as in like I could have fuel on one side temperature on the other or fuel on one side and just a ginormous rpm meter in the center and maybe miles per hour on the there's I don't know I just wish there was a little more it's kind of a canned set of uh, settings and you can't really do much more from that but it's it's good the way it's laid out and you get a lot of really good data like how much range you have what are you getting for mileage uh, you can set up your blinker modes so if you put LEDs on the computer knows that you have LEDs and it doesn't uh, you know blink super fast so that's kind of cool um, you can tell it to only click uh, like three times if you just touch it uh, instead of staying on all the time you, there's a lot of little uh, customizations you can do uh, it has cruise control which is kind of cool because uh, on a long ride you know your hands get tired so uh, it's a one button cruise control you literally tap it it turns it on and then you tap it again and it sets the speed so uh, and then of course any blip of the throttle or touch of the brakes it's going to shut it's going to shut the cruise off so that's kind of neat uh, the suspension will hit next the suspension man it's super windy out right now uh, the suspension on this bike is really really good as well i like the fact that uh, it's all adjustable and in one of my videos i show you how to adjust the suspension and we use this bike to do that adjustment uh, when i first got the bike i had a lot of trouble with the way the suspension was laid out uh, i was it was just beating me to death and i was bottoming out all the time it was just it was just a nightmare uh, however after just a little bit of time taking a little bit of time to adjust things out right you know it came out really nice and i don't have any issues with it i really like it now uh, a lot of people in the comments ask how tall are you how much do you weigh uh, i am six foot four inches i weigh 230 pounds and i have a 35 inch inseam so i have long legs uh, that being said 
Uh, I'll get into the riding position in this point number two, uh, but uh, again, the suspension being fully adjustable, off-road ready, you know, you can take this on some moderate bumps. I would not feel uh, worried about going down a single path trail. I would not want to take this over gigantic boulders and stuff where you really need low gearing because this bike obviously is designed to ride on the road and also ride a little bit on the, on the dirt. Uh, this machine would probably do really good at high speed desert sledding uh, just because, you know, it's got the travel for the suspension. It can suck up some pretty good nasty uh, challenges with this with bumps and sand and stuff. And it's got the power to get through it uh, with some knobbies. I think this bike would be really unstoppable. Uh, but first gear, it's just a little too high, obviously, for streetability. You might be able to change a sprocket out and get a little bit that, but uh, you would sacrifice your top end quite a bit. The uh, comfort on riding this bike is excellent as well. Um, and again, I'm going to talk about that a little bit in the riding position. Uh, I will say the motor is well thought out as well. The mechanicals, the power curve on this bike is excellent. It gives you power down low. It sounds good doing it. Uh, and it pulls really hard all the way through the rev, line, rev line. Uh, It goes about five grand, it starts really dropping off, but it's still pulling. Um, so it, I, I really enjoy to bring it up there. It's just, it really takes off. Now, a couple cons about the mechanicals from the factory. Uh, I will say that there is a tremendous amount of heat on your right leg because of the high side exhaust and the, the uh, catalytic converter. That cat really, it really attacks your leg uh, in the hot weather. If you're not moving, you're sitting in traffic, it is pretty deadly. So there's some ways to fix that. I have a video on um, installing an X-pipe and the X-pipe definitely does work well for that purpose. The heat is quite reduced and actually the drivability of the bike is, is greatly increased as well, which is kind of nice. Um, Another thing, uh, with the high side exhaust, they've got a rather funky rear fender arrangement, and I, I kind of wish from the factory they just tucked everything up a little bit better. Uh, I did that. Again, I have another video on my channel show you how to do it, uh, but the um, blinker is then in the line of fire of the exhaust, and I've got to figure out a solution because it's melting. Uh, the other thing, too, that I don't like from the factory as far as mechanical ability, I guess, um, is the drain, or excuse me, the oil fill. The drain is fine. The oil fill is absolutely terrible. They put it down next to the pipes. It's super hard to get to. You need like a really ginormous Allen wrench with a universal joint, a short uh, extension, and then a universal joint and a long extension. And it is a bear to get out. Um, it, it's just, it'd be so much nicer if they would have figured out a better where better place to put that maybe on the side of the crankcase i don't know i thought about it a lot i don't really know what they would have done but anything from what they did would have been better uh so i kind of argue about that filling oil is a pain too you've got to have a really long transmission type funnel to get down and you cannot fill the oil when the bike is hot because you'll melt the you'll melt the funnel so <laughs> it's kind of fun Another thing too, I wish they made a side uh, center stand for this. It'd make uh, maintenance on the bike a lot better, uh, but unfortunately they don't have that option that I'm aware of. Uh, there may be an aftermarket offering, but uh, right now I don't think they have a factory one. So that being said, it's kind of annoying. Um, and then crash protection from the factories is quite lacking. I It would have been nice to that have see them put some crash bars on this. I mean, they're marketing this bike for off-road and the bottom of the crankcase is just completely like hit me with a rock and hit me now. So um, again, that's, that's something it wouldn't have been much for them to do from the factory, but they offer aftermarket stuff and you know, that's all right. We, we, got, we got that situation fixed up. Um, and I think the, the last point that I might mention just on style, oh, I, and actually it, it, it does bode to engineering as well, but the fender on the front is super short. And Triumph, I think, realized this, but then they said, oh, we can make money off of this. We'll sell you a fender extension kit. The, um, if you're in any sort of mud or slurry, 
of any sort and you're riding this bike, your radiator will get filled with mud. Uh, and then it will lead to overheating, which is, both of those things are terrible. You don't want your radiator full of mud and you really don't want to have to um, overheat. So um, I had to buy the extension kit and I was kind of upset about it. What are we doing here? What are we doing, C-Town Bob? Yes, yeah. I think it's a woman driving a truck. That might be the issue. <laughs> All right. So anyways, I digress. What's up, Bob? So you um, essentially have to put this extension kit on or it just completely gunks up the radiator when you ride. And so, I don't know. I just wish they kind of thought that through. But maybe some of these people are just buying these for pavement princesses. I don't know. Most likely. All right, that being said, we also have a few other, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, and that is the mirrors. Uh, from the factory, these mirrors have these like antenna alien looking saucer things that stick out way up. And uh, I, I just, I couldn't believe how ugly they are. And they're kind of in the way. Um, I'm not sure what Triumph was thinking about that as well. I was able to fashion some mirrors aftermarket for my buddy Brian over at A&J Cycles, and uh, they're perfect. I love them, they, and they work better. They're better. It's better visibility, anyways. So um, that's an add-on that I kind of would say is a necessity. Triumph makes bar and mirrors too. I had them on my Thrux, and I, they could have, you know, offered an option maybe for this, but when I bought the bike, it was not. So that's okay. What a beautiful day out today, isn't it? What a beautiful day. What a dumb looking car. All right, so uh, let's get over. So we talked about the engineering and the mechanicals and everything really, really nice like that. Let's just talk a little bit about uh, the riding position and drivability of the bike. I think Triumph really knocked that out of the park and that's the thing that keeps me in love with this bike is how comfortable it is to ride in a, ver a variety of situations. Uh, so you can go on this bike for a long road trip and your wrists are not sore, your hands don't feel like they're falling off. Uh, for me, I have lower back issues. My lower back does not bother me at all it's because you're sitting nice upright riding stance. Um, and I just feel, it feels safe riding the bike because you, you've got great visibility. You're not hunched over like the hunchback of the Jixer, you know? Um, you're sitting upright and you can see everything. So that's fantastic. Uh, you're, you're really in control. Your bars are, you're out to the, your hands are out to the side. You've got great control of the bike. And I know Triumph did this because of the enduro fashion of the Scrambler. You want to be able to have this riding position when you're riding and you get a bump, you want to be able to come up off the seat really quick. So henceforth, the pegs are pretty much right below you and you're, you're in line, you're ready to rock. Uh, and, and that's, to me, is awesome. That's exactly what I wanted in this motorcycle. I will tell you a couple cons about this. Con number one, um, because it's an upright and it's tall, I'd say if you were five foot 10, five foot 10 inches or smaller, you might have a problem with this bike. You might have to stand on your tippy toes when you come to stop signs uh, because it's heavy. Now they do have a lowering link uh, for the seat, I believe, uh, but as from the factory, it's, it's pretty high and my suspension I have it adjusted really high because of my weight so um, you know I'm probably an inch above normal on this bike as it stands uh, also with the with the stance when you come to a stop sign your uh, shins are actually going to be right in line with those pegs what's going on guys uh, your shins are going to be right in line with the pegs. So you're going to have to put the shins either out to the side, a little bit wider stance, or you're going to be behind them, uh, which is a little awkward. It's not quite natural. Uh, so just be aware of that. When It's not a deal breaker by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not like you have front forward pegs. Um, and again, this bike isn't really meant to be sitting in traffic for a long time. And when you're riding, it's perfectly fine. Uh, other thing, uh, just just a tweak that I would make on uh, the riding position of this bike, and it's not really something that you can avoid when you're in an upright position, and that's the wind. Your full frontal attack here on the wind um, whenever you're riding on this bike. So you got to understand that you're you're riding on the bike, and you're anything and 
everything is coming at you. Uh, you've got zero protection. So I installed a bug screen on this, which I know might look a little stupid, um, but it does an amazing job with deflecting uh, hail, rain, just a little bit to get it off of you, uh, bugs, everything else. And I know it works because I had this bike for a year without it. And when I put it on the second time, I was like, hey, that works pretty good. No waves from other Harley owners. That's what I love. And they wonder why we pick on Harleys. I don't know. So that being said, uh, just prepare yourself. This is like a naked adventure bike and you are going to be in the wind. There's no protection. Towards the tail end of the season, I bought a heated jacket and it comes factory with heated grips. So you can squeak out an extra month, um, but you're cold. You're cold if you're not wearing protection. Uh, I, again, really enjoy this bike. It's great. I have really no major complaints about it. A um, couple things that I have experienced though that I will mention on the negative side of things. Uh, I've had some issues with ABS and traction control. I don't know if it's because I have a bad speed sensor or not, but for a brand new bike, it's kind of annoying, uh, you know, to have your warning lights come on and, and tell you, hey, you have no traction control, you have nothing. Um, but it's like a gremlin, it comes and goes. So I really don't know what to say about that. Uh, right now it's not acting up. Second off, if you got one of the early batch bikes from the factory, you can't reset the bike, uh, the wrench. So if you go back into your dealer and ask them pretty please, maybe they'll flash your ECU with a newer version. And then through the menu settings in the, in the electronic programming, you can actually turn the wrench off after you've changed your oil, which I need to do on this. Um, I had to reflash uh, and that's where I'm at now. So that's cool. Um, also, uh, from the factory, uh, you know, I mentioned this in my other video, it would have been cool to have the outside air temperature displayed on the display. Triumph originally said they were going to, and something must have happened uh, during they were going to, and they started making the bikes because they never put them on, um, which was kind of a letdown. There was also supposed to be this Bluetooth module that was going to be installed. Um, I waited like eight months and I just finally said, forget it, I'm not doing this anymore. Uh, so that was that was another thing. Um, there's this holder thing underneath the seat that you can put your cell phone in, which is absolutely worthless. It's not waterproof. Um, it never lasts properly. They warranted it, but the parts never came in. Uh, so it's still broken uh, right out of the factory that way. And the, the last thing I would just complain about, but I've already mentioned the suspension. From the factory, the suspension on this bike was totally jacked up. Like, rebound on the left side was as tight as you could get. Rebound on the right was so loose you could move it with your hand. Um, I, I don't understand if that's a dealer thing and they didn't just spend some minute or two just setting up the bike, but it really made me think that something was wrong with the bike. I wouldn't have thought from the factory it would have been so screwed up, but I took a few minutes, investigated it, and we were good to go after that. Uh, so, with that being said, again, awesome bike, super fun to ride, everybody likes it. Pull into a gas station with other bikes, and people always say, hey, that's cool, what is that, a Triumph? Wow, that's, that's pretty rad. Um, it's got a ton of power, it stops on a dime, it's not a highway bike. You're not going to really like it for your interstate coast to coast trip. But if you were taking Route 1 or some of the back roads, this bike is going to make you fall in love with motorcycling all over again. So, my final verdict on this bike, final verdict. Where would, if I had, you know, a voucher to go pick up a new Triumph, uh, would I get this bike again? The answer is yes, I would. I would absolutely buy this bike again. Uh, I really, really like it. It has not let me down. It has been fun. It has been entertaining. And it's just, it's just great to ride. It, it's just all around a nice bike. And it's got power. So it, it, it's, in my book of zero to 10 on the rating, I would rate this as an eight. I would put it up right up by the top. An eight, maybe an 8.5. Now, if you were to ask me if I had a voucher to go buy any other bike on the market, I could pick any bike out, would I pick this bike? Honestly, I would really have to think about it. 
It's not that I wouldn't buy this bike, but there's a few other bikes out there that I really like as well. But I'm I would be torn between buying this bike and getting another bike. That's how much I really enjoy this bike. It's it is really really fun to ride, and it's it's a blast. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope the rambling wasn't too long for you. Uh, until next time, please stay safe out there. Ride safe and uh, keep your stick on the ice.